everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to make this October sweater for boys. Uh, I do believe that this could be made for girls if you would use uh, girly colors, but um, this is the perfect look for boys, so I'm going to keep it uh, as a boys sweater. Okay, so we can see the pattern right here. It looks like a basket weave. Uh, it really reminds me that uh, stitch uh, but it is kind of a, a little bit easier okay so to make this sweater you uh, should be familiar with front post and back post um, double crochets uh, and to know how to do the single crochet ribbing into the back loop okay so let's have a look so it opens in the front for uh, for for it to be easier to put on and then we have buttons right here Again, the open, you can leave it open if you want, like this. Uh, you don't have to do that, you can just make a ribbing if you do not like this idea, but I really like this little detail on the sides. Okay, so this is how it looks from the front and this is from the back. We're going to do a few stripes, again, you can leave it out if you do not uh, like to do any of the color changes. Okay, size-wise we will be making uh, from one years up to six years. Okay, so this is the smallest one. This is one to one and a half years. And I just chose uh, three colors. I'm gonna show you now. Uh, this is a two to three years. Again, buttons, everything exactly the same. Uh, I have two stripes. Uh, in this cardig cardigan and um, I really like the color combinations right here. I have not showed you how the top looks like right here so the color is like this and it comes down nicely around the neck. And uh, I have the biggest one made so this is a five to six years. Again, I have three stripes here. You can do as many or as little stripes as you like. So everything exactly the same, only much bigger. Now, uh, difficulty-wise, I think it's it's not very difficult, uh, but you kind of you're gonna have to be careful when you're making right here so to not not to make any mistakes. I have everything counted out. And I will show you how to do this because this part is the hardest one. You just have to uh, kind of follow some rules just to make those um, increases right here so our yoke uh, comes out correctly in the weave. Okay, so I think this is one of my favorites. It is really, really nice, really, really soft. And actually it is quite warm because we have the same on the other side, it's the same uh, pattern, so it becomes quite thick. Anyways, uh, if you got interested in um, into making one of these, uh, let's go and have a look of what we are going to need and we will start part one. So to make this uh, sweater, we are going to need scissors, four stitch markers, a needle to hide the tails, a measuring tape in centimeters, uh, because my chart is in centimeters, it is easier if you have your measuring tape is in centimeters as well, otherwise you're gonna have to convert centimeters into inches or um, whatever you use to measure length. Then we are going to need seven or eight uh, buttons. Now these are small, these are 12 millimeters. It could be uh, a little bit bigger, perhaps 15 millimeters. Uh, now I'll show you why we need seven or eight. So we're gonna have three or four right here at the top. And then we're gonna have two at one side and two more on the other side. Now if you decide that you don't uh, want the buttons at the bottom right here, you can just uh, make the ribbing all the way around without it being able to open. Okay, so it's completely up to you, then you're only going to need three or four uh, for the front right here. Um, and then we are going to need uh, two hooks. So for the main uh, pattern for the sweater, I'm going to use a 4.5 millimeter hook and I will use a four millimeter hook for the ribbing. Um, 
because the sweater can get a little heavy uh, uh, we are going to use a bit bigger hook if this hook is still not big enough for you and you feel that it is kind of tight you can use a five millimeter hook and even bigger okay just as long as it gets soft because uh, the pattern itself is quite thick okay so one bigger hook and one smaller and then the yarn so we are going to use um, lightweight yarn or DK weight yarn any kind or brand that you want the colors is completely up to you it just has to be uh, lightweight yarn uh, I usually get comments that maybe I could use a thicker yarn uh, like um, medium weight or something now this cardigan it really is kind of dense okay so if you're gonna use thicker yarn it's going to be really really thick so that's I would really de um, recommend using DK weight or lightweight yarn okay just so it doesn't get too dense so how much yarn we're going to need so we are gonna need uh, two main colors so a hundred grams of the color for the top okay so for the top half and the color around 100 grams was enough for me for all the sizes that I have made and I have made five to six years in uh, color gray and 100 grams was enough then we're gonna need some colors for the stripes okay so I have uh, I'm going to do three stripes this time and I have light blue this storm blue and really dark blue like navy blue okay so you can choose any colors for the stripes you can do one stripe two stripes three stripes the more stripes you make uh, the less of the bottom color you are going to need okay so again completely up to you what colors you want to do what um, how many stripes you can even make it the whole bottom part in stripes you have if you have a lot of um, leftovers but I'm this time I'm just gonna have three and the bottom color so for the small sizes up to two years 100 grams for the bottom was enough for me now as I'm going to make three to four years this time I think 100 grams will not be enough so I have another one I have already started that so it's not a full uh, 100 gram skin as you can see it's probably maybe a little bit more than a half so this is just in case <clears throat> if uh, uh, one is not enough now if you decide uh, to make a sweater with no stripes and let's say in one color you are going to need approximately 300 grams in one color or if you're gonna uh, use two colors then maybe uh, take uh, 150 for the top and 150 grams for the bottom completely up to you what you want to make but this is what I have this is the top three stripes in between and this is the bottom okay so now we have uh, everything ready we can get started so here I have the chart of our starting chain as you can see I only have one now that is because we're using uh, big multiples and it is very very hard to downsize it in starting chain uh, but what we can do uh, once we begin uh, the color around we can uh, make it smaller than but for now for all sizes we're gonna start at the same number of chains so grab your yarn your stitch markers and your bigger hook so I have 4.5 millimeter hook and we're going to start with chaining 64 put in your hook and chain 64 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and keep going until you have sixty four chains I have chained sixty four now we need to add one more chain for turning so chain number sixty five and we're gonna skip that chain and starting from the second chain we will make one single crochet into each chain so skip the first one start from the second and one single crochet into each chain and you can count each single crochet and you should have 64 single crochets at the end of this row so just one single crochet into each chain 
Okay, so once we made our 64 uh, single crochets, we are going to start with uh, the first row of the pattern. So we will always, until we connect the top part or the yoke, we are going to have the first five stitches will be half double crochets and the last five will be half double crochets as well. So to start the row, we are going to chain one and turn. Now starting from the very very first chain right underneath, or excuse me, stitch right underneath the chain one, we're gonna make our first half double crochet. So we yarn over, go into that first stitch and half double crochet. This is one, this is two, three, four and five. Five half double crochets. Now we need to have 11 stitches before the first corner. So we have done five half double crochets. The next six uh, stitches are double crochets. So six double crochets. One double crochet. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. Now we need to do an increase for the corner. So this is the number one right here. Into the next chain or stitch, excuse me, we're going to put two double crochets, one and second into that same stitch. We're going to chain one and two more double crochets in there. One and two. Grab a stitch marker and put it in, under that chain one. Next is the shoulder right here, so we need to make ten double crochets. Starting from the next stitch, one double crochet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten double crochets. Next is our corner, so it's exactly the same as we did right here. Into the next stitch, we make two double crochets. Chain one. And two more double crochets. We're going to put a stitch marker into that chain one space. Then we have the back, so 18 double crochet starting from the next stitch. One, two, three, and keep going until you have 18 double crochets. After the 18 we have our third corner, so into the next stitch, two double crochets, chain one and two more double crochets into that same stitch. Stitch marker into the chain one space. The next shoulder, ten double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Our last and fourth corner, two double crochets, 
chain one and two more double crochets back into that same stitch mark your chain one space and we should have 11 stitches left so six double crochets and the last five will be half double crochets so one double crochet two three four five and six double crochets after that half double crochets so one half double crochet two three four and five half double crochets and this is how it looks after one row of pattern okay we have the single row I don't count it it was like a, like a base so we are going to really start the pattern in the next row we do not need this anymore have a look if you need this will be on my Facebook page if you need a, a better look but for now we just need to keep going starting row number two we need to make our first buttonhole here and it will be on top of the third half double crochet so we start with chaining one and turn now we need to make a half double crochet into that very first stitch so right here right in, underneath that chain one so half double crochet one more half double crochet into that next stitch that's two half double crochets then we're going to uh, chain one that is the buttonhole we're gonna skip that stitch then a half double crochet so technically you have one half double crochet two th there should be a third one but we have a buttonhole four and fifth so five half double crochets and this is a buttonhole so just like that okay so this is where the pattern starts now okay so this is going to be front post and back post double crochets we start with two front post double crochets so yarn over find the double crochet that is next so right here and make a front post double crochet next one is a front post double crochet as well we will be working in twos so two front post double crochets two back post two front post two back post we made the front ones the next two are back post double crochets then two front post double crochets and we should have two back post double crochets be before our stitch marker now we will be making our increases in the corners in every uh, second row so we have made an increase in the row before so uh, this time we are just going to chain one take the stitch marker out we're gonna skip that chain one and the next two double crochets are going to be the back post double crochet so we have to match this side whatever you do before the corner and the next two stitches will be the same so if it's back post double crochets we're gonna have back post double crochets there as well so starting with the first one back post double crochet and back post double crochet I'm going to put the stitch marker back into that chain one and then continue on this is the shoulder so we did two back posts next to our front post double crochets 
one and two. Then back post, one and two. Then front post, one and two. Then back post, then back, uh, then front post, and then the last two before the stitch marker is two back post double crochets. Now you will always have the same stitches before and after the stitch marker. So if it was back post, uh, double crochets before the stitch marker, so back post, it will be back post on the other side of the chain one. And all the corners are going to be the same uh, in that row. Okay, so back post, double crochets, chain one, I'm going to take this out and I continue after that chain one in the next two with a back post double crochets stitch marker back in and then front post and back post so keep going until you get right here again the two last stitches for the stitch marker were back post double crochets just like everywhere else chain one stitch marker out the next two are back post double crochets so continue on swapping around uh, front posts and back posts double crochets make your last corner exactly the same and I will meet you right here at the end your last two should be front post double crochets before we start the half double crochets at the very end you will always the first two will be the front post double crochets and the last two will be uh, front post double crochets as well always okay so to front post double crochets and the five half double crochets so one two three four and five now to start row number three, we are uh, going to chain one and start with half double crochets. Now what I want to say is that in rows one, three, five, seven, nine, in odd number rows, we will be increasing at the corner. So we are on row number three. So that means we will do an increase. Chain one and turn. Make five half double crochets. One two, three, four, and five. And like I said, the very first two will always be front post double crochets, okay? So they look like back post double crochets from the previous row because we have turned around. Now it looks like they are back post. So we will always be making the uh, complete opposite of what it is now, okay? So it's it looks like back post double crochets, we make them into front post double crochets. So one and two. Then we it looks like it's front post double crochets. We make the opposite. It's back post double crochets. Then it's two front post double crochets. and two back post double crochets and we are at our uh, stitch marker and we are doing an increase in this row so row one three five and so on so into that chain one space 
we are going to do two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets and mark that chain one space and now again the the next two are back post double crochets now whichever way it is easier for you you either look what you have so front post double crochets I make the opposite of it so back post double crochets or you look at the last two before the corner that you have made and you match it right here whatever is easier for you for me it's easier uh, to do the visual thing so I can see that they are looking at me so I make the opposite so it is back post double crochets and then continue on swapping those two around so to front post double crochets and to back post double crochets and keep going until you get to your next corner again in the chain one space two double crochets chain one and two double crochets stitch marker in the chain one and start your back so again I can see it's looking at me it's front post double crochet so I make the opposite of back post double crochets and you can see that the weave is really starting to come out now you can see now uh, it looks like a weave just because we are always doing the opposite posts uh, double crochets okay so again front post and back post and so on so finish this row you have two more corners to do so uh, all corners are always going to be the same and I will see you right here when to f uh, when we're going to finish row number three and again finishing up the last two before the half double crochets will always be front post double crochets and we finish with five half double crochets so one two now we have a buttonhole underneath so we have to be careful not to skip that chain we put three four and the very last one could be a small one right here five half double crochets and this is three rows of pattern so you can see the weave really starting to come out now okay so row number four it is an even number row so no increasing in the corners we start with chain one turn and the first five are half double crochets starting from the very first stitch one two three four and five and again we start our weave with two front post double crochets so again it is the opposite of what we have one two then back post then front post then back post and we end up with two double crochets that we have just increased and they are nothing they haven't been front post or back post in the uh, row before we just added them so we just need to go by the pattern if you had two back post double crochets before you just make two front posts we just bring them 
into our pattern, into our work. So if it was back post, then you make front posts right there. You're going to chain one, pull that out, and again, the next two will be the same as right here. So after that chain one, I have two front post double crochets. Stitch marker back in and continue on with your pattern. Okay, keep going. I will meet you at the next corner just in case. I will show this again. Again, at the corners, we need to uh, bring the last two double crochets into our work. So it was back post, so the next two are front post double crochets. Chain one and continue on. If it was front post right here, it will be the two front posts on the other side of the chain as well. Into the chain one space and continue on all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. And the last five are half double crochets and we're finishing row number Four. Now row number five again is an odd number row. That means that we are increasing at the corners. One, two, three, four, and five. First two are always front post double crochets or the opposite of what you see. I am hoping that you are uh, getting the hang of the pattern uh, by now. Now it's uh, always easiest for me just to uh, see visually of what I have and always make the opposite than I have. So here I finish with to front post double crochets and into the chain one space two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets stitch marker into the chain one and continue on so two front post double crochets and two back post. Okay, so finish uh, this row. So this is row number one, two, three, four, five. And we are getting ready to do another buttonhole. So I'll see you at the end. Finishing this row, my last five half double crochets. chain one and turn. Now this is where I'm going to make my next buttonhole. So I want to have three rows of half double crochets in between my buttonholes. If you think that you want uh, more in between the buttonholes, you can just make two more uh, rows and have five half double crochets rows in between. But then you might only be able to fit like two buttons um, at the front. Okay, so I kind of want three or even four. So this is my next buttonhole and you make sure that you do buttonholes on the same side. So again, one half double crochet, two half double crochets, chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet and half double crochet. So two buttonholes and don't forget to make them. Uh, then again, I'm going to have three half double crochets rows and another buttonhole and continue on. I will get to the corner. This is the last time that I'm going to show this. I have spent a lot of time, but I just wanted to make 
absolutely sure that you understand the concept of how this works. It will get easier once we finish uh, the yolk. This is just the increasing, but it has to be done. And again, we come to two double crochets from the increase in the previous row and we need to make something out of them. So these were two front posts. So two back post double crochets. Chain one. We did the increase in the row before, so no increasing in this row. Chain one and two back post double crochets behind the chain one. So this is all there is to it, okay? So you need to uh, continue, continue, continue. Now let me see, this is the buttonholes. So I'm gonna have my buttonholes on the right hand side. So this is how our yoke looks like now. So we can really start to see the weaving becoming, becoming really quite uh, clear. It's nice and soft. Okay, so now we need to continue doing this until our chest, we, we reach our chest measurement. Now, I have my chart here. Let me see. Okay, so I am making a size three to four years. And the chest for the finished cardigan, three to four years, is 60 two centimeters. Now that is all the way around. As we're only going to measure the back part because this is the only part that is connected, we need only a half of this. So I'm going to divide it into two, so 31 centimeters. I will keep doing the same thing as I did right here until it measures 31 centimeters from one stitch marker to another. Now it is at 21. I need to keep going until it is this wide. So another good few rows. Okay, keep going. I'll see you when I have this done. And don't forget your buttonholes because it's very annoying then to have to frog everything out just to make a buttonhole. Okay, and so my yoke is done. I ended up doing 13 rows. Uh, now for you, the number of rows does not matter. Uh, we just need our chest measurement for connecting. Okay, so we're going to measure, like I said, the back of the cardigan and we need it to be a half of this number right here. Okay, so as we are making from 12 uh, months and bigger, you find your chest measurement and you divide it into two. So. 56 would be uh, 20, how many it would be, uh, 28 centimeters, 29, 30, 31, 32, or 33. Now we definitely want to reach that half. It can be bigger because it is a pullover, but not smaller because we won't be able to do any increasing underneath the armholes, okay? So three to four, three to four years for me, 62 divided into 2, 31 centimeters. Now from stitch marker to stitch marker. So just like that. And I am at approximately 31 and a half, 32 centimeters. And then we'll approximately here somewhere. So I'm a little bit over, absolutely perfect. Don't worry if you are a centimeter or even uh, more than a centimeter over. Uh, the width right here, absolutely uh, perfect, maybe even better because like I said, it is a pullover. Uh, it might be uh, easier to put on. Okay, so the next step is to connect our yoke. Now, there's two chances, okay, right here. So uh, I have finished on the row where I have increased in the corner. So I have increases right here. You might not have increases right here. Okay. So it's slightly different, but just the only difference really is, is which way you will start the next row. So what you want to do is 
you want to put it like this and you want the side with your buttonholes to be under your left hand then you're gonna place it on top like this so this is for boys okay so we want the side with the buttonholes to be on top okay so this is going to be the right side and then we see which side that you, you have finished on so I have finished on this side so what I'm gonna do I am going to make four double crochets connecting okay so four from one side and four from the other side and then I'm gonna have one and one because we had five in total now if you have your yarn on the other side right here okay if you have finished on the other row with no increases you are just gonna go again one two three four on one side and one two three four on the other side but you will just be going the other way nothing not really a big difference now if you find it difficult and you, you don't understand what I'm talking about just make another row and finish on the same like me again you you might get a little bit uh, bigger around the chest not a big problem so right here okay so I'm gonna find uh, half double crochet number four from the end one two three and four and I want to pull that stitch in like this okay so I'm crocheting I'm gonna have four double crochets connecting the front so after I do that I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna put a double crochet back in through both of those stitches so stitch on one side <clears throat> and the same stitch on the other side like this and that is one now into the next stitch here and into the next stitch on the other one two three and three and four and four okay then you should have one half double crochet left right here and one half double crochet left on the other side okay so if you're going from this side you're gonna do exactly the same four and you're gonna have one half double crochet left it really is just the difference of which way we're going okay so next where we have that extra double uh, half double crochet we put a double crochet in there and then we now start our uh, weave so like I said it always starts with a two front post double crochets and continue on until you hit your uh, stitch marker so I'm coming to my first corner and because I had increases in the last row before I have two double crochets uh, that haven't got any uh, post double crochets yet so this was front post I just finished them with back post double crochet we just bring them into work and then where the chain one is we're gonna put in a double crochet now we're going to chain one skip all this this is going to be the sleeve and right into the next stitch marker double crochet now again because I had um, increases uh, I need to match the other side because I have two double crochets that are not brought into work yet and these are back post double crochets because they were back post on the other side and two front post double crochets and two back post and keep going weaving around until you get to your next stitch marker so you're just crocheting an extra row at the back here again at the other stitch marker I have two double crochets that I need to bring into work and these are the same back post double crochets now it is quite important to make an absolutely sh absolute sure that the two double crochets that you have before the double crochet in the chain one are exactly the same on one side on the other side 
and at the two fronts because otherwise uh, once we connect our um, multiples will be wrong and we won't be able to do the weaving all the way down okay it will be messy underneath the armholes so just make sure that you have the same uh, kind of let's say for me it's double crochet here and back post double crochets and then I have back post double crochets and a double crochet here chain one and on the other side I'm gonna put a double crochet into the stitch marker and the next two are back post double crochets so again all of these have to be the same otherwise our weave will be uh, very hard to fix and then front post double crochets and keep going until you get to the place where you have connected the front so keep going I'll see you right here okay so I have made my last two front post double crochets then I have one half double crochet left so I'm just gonna put a double crochet in here I'm going to connect into the very very first stitch with a slip stitch chain one and cut your yarn so I'm gonna leave a little tail right here and pull it out so here we are we have our front connected now it might look a little messy right here uh, right now that is because we do not have our buttons in but once you have the buttons in like this so they will be moving a little bit forward so they will be right in the very middle and I have three buttonholes I hope you didn't forget to make your ones so just like that okay so the next step is to change colors or to move to the back okay so we don't want to keep connecting right at the front uh, it's not gonna be very noticeable but still it's better to do at the back so uh, either grab your next color if you're going to do stripes or you are just gonna start your next row maybe in the same color at the back and so color changes so you want to make sure now this is the same for everybody that your uh, sweater is the good side up okay so this is the outside now we're gonna start at the back uh, at any place that you want it really doesn't matter make a slip knot and uh, just choose a place where you have the back post double crochet so you can see I have the back post double crochets right here and I'm gonna go into that stitch in between or in that stitch doesn't really matter I'm gonna join I'm gonna chain one and start with back post double crochets now it really doesn't matter which ones you start I just find this easiest and the joining um, is not that obvious so back post and back post front post and front post and you keep going until you get very very close to that chain one that we have so you can see right here that these are my last two back post double crochets and then I have that double crochet that uh, I have connected with okay that went into the corner stitch so I make the front post front post now next we make a double crochet into that stitch from that double crochet we're going to skip the chain one we're not gonna crochet into that we're gonna ma uh, make a double crochet on the other side in that other double crochet and then we continue on with the pattern okay so I have back post I make them front post double crochets now what you want uh, to have here 
is you want to have two double crochets in between um, so these are front post front post two double crochets with nothing and then again two two front posts so that the next row that we are uh, making we can bring this into work and then you just continue on with your pattern until you get to the end of this row now I might have uh, I might come back and just show you around uh, the front area right here I am at those six double crochets in the begin in the very very front so one two three four five and six and you we just continue on with our pattern right here okay so I did, had back post so one front post now second front post I make sure that I don't catch that chain one in there I'm just gonna leave it I'm gonna make a front post then back post back post and two front post double crochets and we brought that front into the working pattern and then continue on until you get to the end of this row okay so finishing up is easy this is the chain one that we have started with we are gonna skip that and into the stitch above slip stitch now you're gonna chain one and turn we still need to keep turning our rows and we just start with the next one so I had this is back post I make front post and just keep going until you finish this row now at the end again you want to connect into the top of the first double crochet and not the chain one so slip stitch if you're not gonna change colors you're gonna chain one and turn and then you just start with whatever you have in front of you so I have back post double crochets and you just keep going um, so you can decide whatever uh, kind of stripes you want to do you can do um, two three four rows of each color or uh, so I'm planning on doing two rows of each color so this one then this one and then the dark one not quite sure about the dark one I would like to use it but I will see how it all uh, comes together and then whenever you decide that you had enough stripes you can just take your main color and keep going until you get to the length now I'm gonna show you once more how I'm gonna change colors just a quick one so I'm gonna just pull that out and I'm gonna turn around grab the next color you can join at in the same place or in a different place so I'm just gonna move it back a little bit right here chain one and start in the next stitch so whatever you choose to do here is completely up to you like I have said that now we need to get the pattern going uh, until we need to do our ribbing now what we want to leave the about six centimeters at the bottom for the ribbing okay so <clears throat> we crochet right here until we have six centimeters left down to the very bottom now this is the thing you can change the length of your cardigan I want the cardigan length to be the same length as the sleeve so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look up the sleeve length so let me see age sleeve length right here for my age three to four years is 24 and a half centimeters so the sleeve length is here 
and I want the same length for my cardigan but I want to leave the last six centimeters for the ribbing so 24 uh, 20 24 and a half minus six will be 18 and a half so from the place under the armhole where we have connected right here I want to crochet down for about 18 and a half centimeters okay if you want your cardigan longer you can make more rows if you want it shorter you make less rows but I'm going to base it on the length of the sleeve okay so we just keep going uh, I am going to finish part one right here and I will see you in part two and I will have the bottom made and I will show you again how I measured uh, just in case you didn't quite understand what I was saying right now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in part two bye